everyone. Welcome to Improving Reality 2012. Um, it's welcome. <laughs> it's it's really amazing to have such a fantastic crowd. We we are a sellout. There's a few you know kind of um, chairs uh, empty, but. They are indeed uh, from ticket holders. So we've got a full house, which is brilliant. Um, my name's Ona Haja, and I'm the director of Lighthouse, who organized Improving Reality. Um, I'm going to be your host for the day. And what we're going to do today is playfully and critically look at how designers, artists, makers, writers are using various means to shift our perceptions of reality. And that's really at the heart of what we do at Lighthouse. We're a digital culture agency based here in Brighton. Um, and we work with digital artists and filmmakers on exhibitions, commissions, and events that really show how digital culture is transforming the world that we live in. And today, we're going to peer into the near future and try and catch some of those transformations in action. We've got a quite astonishing group of speakers with us today to help us do this. Um, including artists who literally see the world differently um, to the way we do, such as Luke Jerram, creative technologists comfortable with the idea of time travel, such as Leila Johnston, designers who are radically re-engineering our concept of the world that we live in, such as Anna Jane and Usman Haq, curators who are markedly skilled at weaving these narratives of transformation together, such as Regine de Betty and Joanne McNeil. We've got brilliant thinkers, such as Rebecca Kill, and we've got at least one living legend with us today. <laughs> Welcome, Warren Ellis. Um, we've organized the day around two sessions. First up is called The Edge of Reality, where Warren, Anab, Layla, and Joanne will give talks that explore how the speculative is impacting on our experience of reality. Then we're going to take a break um, at 2.30, and then at 3.25, We'll come back for Beyond the Visible, where Luke, Regine, and Usman will talk about how artists and designers help us perceive aspects of the world which are there but invisible. And the final talk of the day will be by Rebecca Kill. Now, immediately afterwards, we've got a real treat for you. Um, we've got an evening panel session called Brighton SF, hosted by our good friend Jeremy Keith, who's somewhere out there, um, maybe out there. Um, <laughs> Uh, and that is uh, really bringing together some of the, the, the absolute biggest names in speculative fiction, including the great Brian Aldiss um, and award-winning writers Jeff Noon and Lauren Bukes. Um, now, hands up who is coming to Brighton SF from this crowd. That's great. Not everybody. Um, if you already have a ticket, you'll have a blue sticker on your badge. If you don't have a blue sticker and you've suddenly decided that you desperately do need to see Brian Aldis make a very rare appearance, um, we still have one or two tickets available, um, and they'll be available during the break. So go downstairs, have a chat to the front of house team, and they'll sort you out for what really is looking like quite a superb evening event. Over the course of today, we're going to be debating whether reality is really something that can be improved. Now, we know that that's a provocative idea. The title of the conference came from the artist Julian Oliver, who spoke at last year's conference, and he coined this term as a deliberate provocation in response to the proliferation of augmented reality technologies. Um, so we're knowingly engaging with a controversial notion, and we hope in the panel uh, sessions, which are going to uh, follow each of the sessions, each of the two sessions, that you're going to get involved in the conversation, ask questions, and help us test out this proposition. Today's conference is part of Brighton Digital Festival, a month-long celebration of digital culture that features no less than 100 exhibitions, workshops, conferences, screenings, performances, and meetups. It's administered by our friends at Wired Sussex, some of whom are here today, in association with Lighthouse. But the events are really put together by Brighton's digital community, individual developers, designers, artists, tech companies, who are basically working out of the goodness of their heart to create what is truly a grassroots festival. I'm going to be telling you more about some of the other festival events throughout the day, but for now I just wanted to mention our exhibition Odysseys by David Blandy, which is showing over at the Phoenix Gallery. David's um, work explores where the fantastic and the real collide, um, and in a very real way it's been the inspiration for some of the themes that we're exploring today. 
This is the second of about five or six major conferences that we're hosting um, during the festival, um, including the second one this week. Um, so yesterday, we had the final day of reasons to be creative. I think some of you were probably there. Um, and tomorrow, we have one of the undoubted highlights of Brighton Digital Festival, the Deconstruct Conference. Um, under the theme of playing with the future, they're going to be exploring some of the ideas that we might be touching on today. They very kindly invited you all to come along to the Deconstruct Party this evening at the terraces um, after Brighton SF, so we'll be telling you a bit about that later on. These conferences have really transformed Brighton into a hotbed of digital culture this week, and we're so pleased to be part of it. We're enormously grateful to our funder, Arts Council England. Conferences like this are expensive to put on, and their support has made it possible for us to make the tickets affordable and to bring you this fantastic lineup today. So, our sincere thanks to John and Steph and everybody at Arts Council England. Before we kick off, just a couple of essential housekeeping matters. The fire exits are there and there. Um, the toilets are over there, so just kind of in the corner there. And there's more toilets downstairs under the cafe, so if you need them, that's where they are. The Wi-Fi password's up there on the screen. Um, we would love you to get on the network if you can. We're a small group, so we all should be able to pile on. Um, it would be great if you can be blogging and tweeting throughout the day. Um, we'd love to know what you think. The hashtag is irreality. Um, so please, you know, kind of be frank and honest and generous in your feedback <laughs> to our wonderful speakers. Um, also, just a note that we are filming today. So we've got our camera crew at the back here. Um, it's just worth you knowing that during the discussion, you will be on camera. Um, and that also means that during the discussions, if you could wait for the roving mic before you ask your question, we'd be sincerely grateful. So, with the practicalities out of the way, it's time for our first session. And in this session, we're going to explore how speculative fictions, alternate realities, and radically new concepts of time help shape our experience of reality. It seems today that writers, designers, and artists are working with techniques and ideas which only a few years ago would have been considered straight out science fiction. So now we're gonna hear tales from the edge of reality, of near future designs, unlikely inventions, stories about time travel and atemporality. And who better to start that exploration than somebody who's really sculpted the imagination of a generation? How do you even begin to introduce someone like Warren Ellis? He's without question one of the most important writers of graphic novels and comics in the world today. He's won the Eagle Award seven times. He's worked with both DC and Marvel on everything from Iron Man to the X-Men. But of course, he's best known for his own original, inventive, and highly influential works, such as Transmetropolitan, Red, Fell, Ministry of Space, We Could Go On. Um, he's produced experimental digital publications such as SVK with the design firm Berg and in recent times has been writing novels. Some of you here would have been lucky enough to read Crooked Little Vein and I'm sure many of you are looking forward to Gun Machine which comes out early next year. Um, Warren decided quite recently um, that what he was going to do for you today for his keynote was hold a seance for the future and launch the room into the science fiction condition. So, let's help him do this. Welcome, Warren Ellis. Thank you. 